All right, next up, question 12. Someone wanted 13, 16, and 17. All right, so question 12, Come an eye on a fact. We're gonna have something like this on the exam tomorrow, right? <clears throat> silver chromate, silver chromate's gonna ionize to give me silver and chromate. KSP is gonna be the concentration of silver squared times the concentration of chromate. The only difference here is we have a common ion. I've added potassium chromate to solution. So when I'm setting up my ice table, right? I don't know my concentration of silver. That's what I wanna find, that's X. My concentration of chromate though is 0.5 from the potassium chromate. So we're gonna set silver as X because that's our only unknown. So we plug into our KSP, right? KSP nine times 10 to the minus 12 equals my concentration of silver, which is X. That still needs to be squared because we still have to use the KSP expression that we came up with for the reaction. Um, times my concentration of chromate, which was 0.5. Divide both sides by 0.5 and I get X squared equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. Square root of both sides and I get X equals about 4.2 times 10 to the minus six. All right, so Olivia and Lucas, how come we just use X squared instead of two X squared, right? And Lucas asks the same question. And it's because if we did not know either concentration, right? We would set silver as two X relative to our chromate as X. In this case, we know one of the concentrations. We know the chromate concentration. We know chromate is 0.5. So I don't have to set silver as 2X because it's the only thing I'm looking for, right? I Here, it's 2X because it's relative to chromate, right? It's twice the concentration of chromate because these two are related when they're from silver chromate. This time, this chromate is not related to silver chromate. It's from a different source. I know this concentration. Silver is my only unknown, so we can just call it X. I don't have to call it 2X in this case. Right? It would be 2X if we're comparing it to something else. It's, it's our only thing we're looking for. Um, if you do set it as 2x, you're going to get this. I think you end up getting the same number anyways, but you're just making more work for yourself. Did someone want to say something? I heard the mic kick on a few times, but. Correct. If in our KSP expression. Um, oh, okay. If in our KSP expression, um, so whoever had your mic on, I just muted you if that's okay. Um, in your KSP expression, correct. If it's if it needs to be squared, we're always gonna square that, whether it's X or whether we have a concentration here, yes, you would still need to square it, Zoe. All right, I think Tween asked for, well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was somebody asked for question 13. Um, yeah, we went over eight. Um, your last three answers. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to 25. We're working in chronological order, moving as fast as I can. Sorry. Um, your last three answers. So seven, eight, and nine. Um, so what did you use for seven, eight, and nine? I think it's just easier if I would just like talk instead of typing. Um, but okay. for like the three that I have wrong are blank eight, blank nine, and the pH. 
Um, for blank, oh, okay. blank eight and nine, I got 0. 0.007, which got the wrong pH too. Um, yeah, so 0. 0.007. Um, the other thing you can do is you can set it up as a number, right? So, or as a, as a variable. So seven, sorry, eight and nine, you could just simply say, you know, X, you could just set them up as X, both of them are X. Yeah, X should work plus X should work. Um, and then for the pH, right? You got point zero zero seven, which yeah, we got point zero zero six nine eight. So your pH from that should work. It should be very close. So it might be a significant figure issue maybe um, because negative log of 0 0.007, right? I get 2.15, yeah. And then 14 minus that, right? So from this, I get a pH of 11.8. Eight five. Um, so yeah, like Kareen said, it, it should have two significant figures. So yeah, Kareen is correct, right? It, so instead of 0 0.007, yeah, I would really round this to 0 0.0070. Um, and we should get a pH, you know, depending on what number you use, 11.84, 11.85 should give you the correct um, answer there. Who was it? Yeah, Maddie. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. All right, back to 13. So 13, right? Calcium oxalate. I talked about this on Sunday night um, and in an office hours today. So anytime you eat spinach, you know that like weird feeling on your teeth um, after you eat spinach, that weird film. There's a lot of oxalate in spinach. And so that's actually like calcium oxalate precipitating on the surface of your teeth. Um, so calcium oxalate is also found in different types of kidney stones. So what do you want to do, right? If you're concerned about having kidney stones, there we go, right? Calcium oxalate ionizes to give us calcium and oxalate. Oxalate is the conjugate base of oxalic acid, which means oxalate will behave like a base. So what we want to do is we want to keep oxalate away from this equilibrium. We don't want solid calcium oxalate. Because we know oxalate is the conjugate base right, of oxalic acid, and they tell us that right here in the problem, Right, they tell us this is the conjugate base of oxalic acid. So if I increase the P, if I make this more acidic, I can protonate this conjugate base and move it out of the equilibrium. So thinking of the Chatelier's principle, right? If I take this and I move this out of the equilibrium into something else, right? By protonating it, the Chatelier's principle says, right? we're going to move the equilibrium in a direction to replace what was lost. So if I protonate that oxalate and take it away as something else, I'm protonating it, I'm protonating it, removing it, removing it, that's going to let more calcium oxalate go into solution, right? It was the same thing with the Flint, Michigan water crisis, lead carbonate. Carbonate is the conjugate base, right? It's a conjugate base. I make the water more acidic. That's going to increase the solubility of lead carbonate because that anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid. All right, so the same, that's what we wanna do here. We wanna make right, a more acidic pH to help keep oxalate in solution and not as solid calcium oxalate. Correct, right? All these anions of our acids are conjugate bases of those acids. Oh, I think I see what you were doing in question 16 here. Yeah, question 16, I reset, but in the event that it didn't update for you, 
when I made this question, Top Hat didn't have the ability to do um, subscripts and superscripts. So I just had to write it out without superscripts and subscripts. And so maybe you're getting this question wrong because you're writing it in and you're trying to use the superscripts and subscripts. So in this, um, in this reaction, right, A minus is behaving like a base because it's going to form HA. So it's accepting a proton. So A minus is our base. Um, hydronium is our acid because it donates a proton. It goes from hydronium to water, right? And so that makes, if, if H, if A minus is our base, I guess it would help if I wrote these things out, and this is our acid, that makes HA our conjugate base, and that makes, um, or sorry, our conjugate acid. And that would make water our conjugate base, because in the reverse direction, in the reverse direction, HA is gonna donate a proton behaving like an acid. In the reverse direction, water is gonna gain a proton acting like a base. And so to answer your question from earlier, Rochelle, right, these two are what are paired together. So yes, water is there, but water is not the conjugate base of our base that's in solution, right? Those two are not related. A minus is related to HA, just like hydronium is related to water. So these two are pairs and the other two are pairs. We're never going to pair, right? A minus is not going to be paired with water, for example. Yeah, it might just be formatting. Yeah, we're going to we're going to get to 24 and 25. We're working that direction, Ellie. I know we're not there yet, but you you shouldn't need the formatting. You should be able to just to write it in. Um, and you should all you can also use the words. So if you just typed in water or hydronium, that should work. All right, what was next? Question 17. I think question 17 was probably just a significant figure issue for some people. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll do 17. I'll jump back to 14. I don't know if it was on the list or not. Um, so because in our pH, we have 3.80, I've got two decimal places. I need, to, that's two significant figures. I need to have two sig figs in my concentration. So pH is 3.80. Um, what's my hydronium concentration? Well, hydronium equals 10 to the negative pH. So hydronium equals 10 to the negative 3.80. I need to have two significant figures there. So my hydronium is 1.6 times 10 to the minus four um, for question 17. I'm going to jump back to question 14 real quick here. Oh, okay. Yeah, question 14. Anytime we're doing a dilution, right? M1V1 equals M2V2. So I dilute 11 milliliters of 0.25 to 850 milliliters. So my initial concentration is 0.25 molar, and I take 11 milliliters of that solution. Um, actually, if you wanna give me your numbers, are your numbers the same as this for question 14 or are they different? I think they're the same. Okay. So my new concentration is what I'm looking for at my new volume, right? My new volume is 850. We don't have to convert to liters. We just want to make sure units of volume are the same on both sides. So multiply those two together, divide by 850. So 0.25 times 11 
divide that by 850. I get a new concentration. My new concentration is um, 3.235 times 10 to the minus three molar. The key is this is HCl. This is a strong acid. So my concentration of HCl equals my concentration of hydronium. So next step is we can find the pH because that's the negative log of hydronium, right? And so pH would equal negative log of that. I get a pH of like 2.49. Um, two decimal places there because I've got two significant figures in my volume, two significant figures in my concentration, and then two here. Yeah, I thought they would be variables. I thought they would probably be different. Um, that being said, it would be um, the same steps, just different. Right, so Rochelle, I already did that step for you, right? I already did that step because in the question it says, we dilute 11 milliliters to a final volume of 850 milliliters. Some of the other questions, you're right. I took 20 milliliters of this, added it with 50 milliliters of this, we have a new volume. But in this problem, you know, I already gave you the final volume. So we don't have to add together. I take that 11 milliliters and I dilute it to 850. Um, and then someone asked if we convert to liters, it would still work if you convert to liters, but uh, it would just, it takes you more time because it's one more unit conversion you don't have to do. Correct. Yeah. So Ben asks, so would you solve the problem differently if it was not a strong acid? Correct. If it was not a strong acid, we would be heading back to, right? a problem like this. If it was a weak acid, Ka table, we would need to know the Ka. We would need, we would have that concentration. We would need the Ka and we would have Ka equals X squared over our concentration, multiply square root, negative log of square root would be our pH if it was a weak acid. This one was a strong acid, so we could just jump right in and find the pH of that for 14. Correct, Rochelle. Yeah, 